Now, I speak about this a lot. I talk about this because I believe God is giving us a prescription for overcoming. And if you go to Revelations, you see that the word says over and over, to him that overcomes, I'm going to do this and this and this and this, and they're going to get this and they're going to get this. And so it's clear to us that God is actually trying to bring us into something. (laughs) But what's the evidence that we don't want it? What's the evidence that we don't want to participate in when we make others responsible for it? Well, yeah, I got mad and I said ungodly things, but it's not because there's ungodliness in me. It's because you provoked me. Well, it's entirely contrary to the Word of God. (laughs) Right? Jesus said what comes out of the heart is what defiles a man. Not to eat with unwashed hands. See, they they were all about, no, it's things going in me that defile me. Jesus said, no, that's actually not the case. That's not even why that was written. You don't understand at all. What comes out of the heart defiles you. Other people helps you see what's in your heart. People you're married to. People you work with. People you live with who are roommates, people that cut you off in traffic. All these people could not bring something out of your heart if that thing wasn't already there. And that's why Jesus was able to be in the midst of being crucified, say, Father, forgive them. Because there was nothing in him alternate to mercy. Wow, that's a, that's, that's a high... I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, you can't. That's why you have to die. That's why there's an exchange happening, not just behavioral improvement. And it's the exchange. The kingdom of God is about an exchange. Transformation through an exchange. I'll take what is yours as soon as you're willing to let it go. And I'll give you what is mine. Oh, oh, well, let's just cover all our bases right now, Lord. You can have it all. Yeah, well, that comprehensive, uh, all-inclusive language may work when you're talking to toddlers, but it actually doesn't work when you don't mean it in the real world. And our problem is we don't mean it, but, you know, it's a shortcut to the right answer. Have it all, Lord. I give it all. I surrender all. I don't sing that much anymore. <laughs> but we well, had surrendered. And so the whole process is God saying, okay, I love you, but you haven't surrendered. I, want, I have more for you. I just need you to surrender. Well, I, I did. Right? Trust me. Trust me, you didn't. Well, uh, Lord, get me to the place where I'm willing to let it go. Yes, that's what we're doing. Ah. Thank you, Lord. There's a process that God has us in. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Recently, I'll just share this. Uh, recently, I, it, wasn't, it wasn't obvious. It wasn't clear. It wasn't this thing that, oh, you know, I love hot dogs too much, and God is asking me to give up hot dogs. It wasn't that kind of thing. I just became aware that there was this resistance inside of me to something God wanted. And it wasn't clear enough to know what it was, but it was clear enough to know that it was something that kept coming up in the context of my relationship with Wendy. It was a a basic selfishness. A basic selfishness. And I don't, you know, I think, well, but God's dealt with a lot of selfish things in me. But but for some reason, it wasn't selfishness over this, over this, over this, over this. It was just selfishness. 
And I remember coming to this place where I truly said, uh, God, take this. And it's almost like, you know, the, the trunk of the tree. God pointed out this branch and this branch. You know, when you're in this situation, you do this, that's not good. So, well, I'll stop behaving that way. No, no, no. It's not about behavior. It's about nature. And what I need to do, and, and as long as you chalk it up to behavior, you're dismissing the real systemic problem that there's corruption at work inside of you. But hey, that's what this is all about. I'm, I've come to reverse corruption in your life. But there's a, a moment of actual deep acknowledgement. And the gospel penetrates as deep as that acknowledgement. And that's why we're coming into a new season where the righteousness of God is going to be revealed in profound ways in this generation. Because it says that I'm not ashamed. Paul write, writes, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed. Because what gets you to turn is the realization that any behavioral righteousness you think you have falls far below his righteousness. In the history of revivals, under powerful ministries was reflected in the degree of change in the converts. The, prof the profundity, how deep the, the message went in converting the soul. Psalm says, the word of the Lord. I can't remember what it is, but it's con it converts the soul. Converts, changes, changes, changes. So what I want to talk about tonight today is uh, touches on this is our, our affinity for behavioral modification if I just provide the right kinds of behaviors I'll be good Father wants to change something more profound than that so Lord we say penetrate deeply into our hearts this morning Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So there's a passage of Scripture I'm going to read in a second. Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 11. But I'm going to go ahead and read the verses before because they seem significant. Isn't that interesting that God said before what he said relates to what he said? <laughs> wow, I never thought of that. God, you're so amazing. So he's talking about some very important things, some, some prophetic destiny issues around Israel. But he touches on the pattern, which applies to us. And he says this. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and, and, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. But this is the fundamental problem. He says, listen. He said, you got to abandon your ways because they're wicked. And you got to change your unrighteous thoughts. Well, how do I do that? Think differently. You ever tried to think differently? You realize it's impossible. I can think different thoughts, but to think differently is not within my wheelhouse. So the Bible says, think on these things. Okay, so I'm going to think on these good things. But all of a sudden, when I'm not noticing, I find myself thinking these other things. Where'd that come from? Oh, I just ignore where it came from and just focus on thinking the right things. But what God is saying, listen, there's a reason why these thoughts are in you. I can change that. Thanks, that's good. By that I mean you can stop anytime. <laughs> so he goes on here and he's, are you guys with me? Yeah. I need some Americans in the room. Let's go. <laughs> 
You know, it's good for you to say amen. Matthew, it's good for you to say amen. Hallelujah. True. Because with the heart you believe, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's not enough, actually, to you, for you to believe in your heart. Salvation, the finished product of believing something, only happens once you speak it, once you articulate something out loud. So I encourage you, learn to say things out loud. Amen. All right. Well, well done, Grace. Woo. I feel the grace in the room. Uh yeah, so he says, uh, he goes on to say after that, he said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways, says the Lord. As For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So I've heard this verse, these verses many times, over and over and over and over and over. I've heard these verses. And I always, it, it always you know, I, I didn't stop and meditate on it because I didn't think there was an answer. But I thought, there's something about this that is not connecting. I'm, I, see, I understand the first part. You know, my thoughts are not your thoughts, right? My your ways are not my ways, he's saying. Okay, uh, my ways are less than your ways. Your thoughts are higher than my way, my thoughts. But then he goes into this thing about rain and snow. And, and right in the middle of that, he says, and do not return there. I'm thinking, well, that's obvious. Right? The, the rain falls and the snow falls, and it, it falls one way. It doesn't go back up. You don't see snow going up. Of course, we know, Right? Water evaporates and it goes up as a vapor, et cetera, et cetera, and this is a cyclical thing. But, but the point is, he's saying, listen, listen, th th this is the way this works. It goes this way. Water comes down and snow comes down and is not returned. In other words, that's not the end of this. There's a process here, and it doesn't end when the water falls and goes back up. Well, that's, see, we are simplistic. We, our solutions are simplistic. Our, our answers when there are problems are, well, just do this. Which is why we pray the way we pray. We pray all the time, God, what should I do? Lord, what should I do? What should I do? I, 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 I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about getting married. Should I marry this woman? Should I marry this guy? Should I go to school? Should I buy a car? Should I, should I rent this house? Should I invest in crypto? What should I do? <laughs> uh, is somebody saying no? <laughs> what should I do? What should I do? It's always a question, what should I do? See, the problem is uh, we're always asking God what we should do, but God is not interested in just the outcomes so that what you do is different than what you did before. He's trying to change something more fundamental in your life. And while we're asking God, what should I do? What shall I do to inherit eternal life, right? Who said that? That's the rich young ruler. And he said, well, do this, this, and this, and this. Well, I've done all these things. Ah, oh, well, good. Change your whole heart. I can't do that. How would I do that? Well, give away everything you have. Weren't you just singing, I surrender all? <laughs> yeah, but I didn't mean that. I meant, you know, something else. Something less costly. God does things to bring change while we, think, we do things to make them different. God is actually trying to change who we are. We're trying to change the circumstances of our, of our lives. We're trying to change outcomes 
And God is trying to change everything underneath those outcomes. He's trying to say, and this is what this verse is about. He's saying, listen, whatever outcomes there are in your life, they're part of a process that's more complex than you know. And so I, you're asking me to change the end product. You're asking me to say, Lord, I'm getting this harvest in my life, and I don't want this harvest. Please give me a different harvest. And he said, well, I might intervene in this moment because you know nothing. And because you're weak and you're ignorant and, and you're, you've been foolish, so I'm going to save you in this moment. But you have realized that the reason you got there is because you watered a seed. You watered a seed. That seed produced something. That thing grew up. You indulged it. You made room for it. You fed that thing. And it's producing fruit. And the harvest of that fruit is this thing. And you're saying to me, God, change my harvest. And I'm saying... Change your sowing. Change your seed. Change the beginning. See, we always want God. We, uh, this, is the, this is the way men do things. We, we, go, we want to change the circumstance at the end of a process. We're God is saying, I want to change the process. And the, here's the thing. God in his mercy, when you are spiritually young, when you don't know anything, he will come and do things in your life to circumvent the choices you made all along to give you an opportunity to make different show choices. But he's doing that to say he's a merciful God, not so that you'll tomorrow you'll ask him for the same, you know, same thing, change my harvest, and the day after change my harvest. So he said, no, change the sowing, change the seed you're using, change the entire process. You think, well, I, I don't know how to do that. Well, Chris does. Just ask him. But here's the, here's the thing. We want things to be different without changing. <laughs> if I had a diet program like that, that is actually advertised, you could lose weight without even working out <laughs> by eating everything you want and watching as much TV as is available. Yeah. I'd make millions. Because that's what everybody wants. I want change without having to do anything different. But the Bible says God is not mocked whatsoever a man sows, so that shall he also reap. Well, Father, Father, penetrate our hearts. See, what God is trying to do is he's trying to say, listen, the reason you keep getting this harvest is because you keep loving this thing over here. You keep loving the seed. I remember years ago when God was dealing with my heart around sexual lust and pornography and things like that. And I said, God, I hate this. He said, no, you don't. You love it. That's the problem. So I'm trying to change the harvest. I don't want to do this anymore. And the Lord said, change what you love. But here's the problem. I can't do that. I, I, only he can do that. Only God can change your heart. But we, we don't. See, ugh, this is the thing. We, we, want, we want to be a part of this kingdom, but we keep trying to do things in our own strength. And what we can do in our own strength is modify behavior. But then when we try to do that, we can't even do that. But we still won't let go of the reins of power to let him go to the heart of the issue and change that. And he's saying, let me, come to me, come on, seek me. Seek me while I can be found. My glory is what changes you. Oh, Lord, I, just tell me what to do. This morning I woke up and I was half asleep. I was, you know, waking up. And I uh, tend to be kind of in this state where I'm meditating. In fact, I wish I could just transpose all of my thoughts onto a computer screen it would be the best article ever. But actually getting it from that process to the place where it's on, on a tablet or on words or in a document is the hard part. Because, But in that moment, I'm seeing things so clearly. And I, I remember thinking about this, and I, people, were, people were saying, God, God, change me, change me, change me. And this is what I felt, this desire. We're saying, God, I want you to change, change, uh, you know, Change this thing here. And I saw this panel 
like a mechanical panel, like a, a soundboard or something like that. And I saw somebody say, okay, what should I set this as? How should I change this dial? How should I change this setting? You know, what, what should I do differently? And, I, and I, I realized this was all vanity because the problem is those dials each have a life of their own. And when you set them, they spring back. Have you ever noticed that? Things go back to where they were before. God even changed Saul. You know, God changed Saul. Turned him into another man. Literally turned him into another man. One day he was this guy. Next thing you know, boom, he's this guy. He's this anointed king. And God literally said, I changed Saul into another man. So what happened? You know, do you know the history of Saul? Do you know how he went back? Do you know how he died? Do you know how he went to see the witch of Endor? And he gave himself to a cult. He tried, began murdering the Lord's anointed. Like, oh, I thought God changed. Yeah, God, God did this thing. God gave him, circumvented the potential as harvest, but he wasn't willing to change these things. And he kept going back like a dog to vomit. And this is our problem. You know this. You know we have this problem. Oh, I don't want to be bitter anymore. But that Kenny. <laughs> Man, I, 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 w I wouldn't be angry anymore if people were just perfect. <laughs> if the whole world was my oyster, I'd be a beautiful person. <laughs> so, God wants to bring change while we want things just to be different. So when I was listening to this verse, and I'd heard this many times, I saw this whole process, and I, and I was thinking, because I kept thinking, God, what, 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 how is this illustrating how your ways are different? And he said, this way, that when you guys ask me to do something, you're asking me to change the end product. And what I'm telling you, the way I change the end, end product is change the, the root. I change the seed. I change the beginning. And everything I do is about a process. And so I can't, I, I can, on a one-time basis, I'll do this for you. Right? You go to your credit card company, it's like, ah, oh, I forgot to pay the bill yesterday. Well, on this one occasion, we'll cancel the interest as long as you make a payment right now. But we'll never do it again. And God does that more mercifully than Amex. But that's not his highest will for you. God's desire is not for you to him to always be intervening in the harvest of your life. He wants to change the end from the beginning. Father, Father, I just pray, God, in Jesus' name. So can you pray in the Spirit? There's, there's, there's deep things that God is trying to stir right now, and there's people watching maybe on this, on this, uh, this message, and you're balking at the word. You're balking at this idea. You don't want to be responsible. It's too much. It's too weighty. I, I cannot take the weight of all that's wrong in my life as though it were my fault. It's not my fault. I'm sure it's my mom's fault. I'm sure it's my dad's fault. I'm sure it's the government's fault. God, in Jesus' name. Come on. This, this generation of believers that is going to come into a fullness are people that's, that are going to take responsibility for their life. They realize that God actually has something. Something that can truly set us free. Thank you, Lord. So when we want to change something, we change the surface. We change the appearance. We change the, the outward veneer of it. And I'm trying to find a way to illustrate this. And I, I think I'm going to talk about color. Now, if you look around the room, there's all, thing, all kinds of things of different color. My hand, it's pink. And, and where I hurt myself yesterday, it's red. Yeah. And my nails, the end of my nails are white. And, of course, the way we replicate these things is we get a canvas and then we take take paints and we paint it and we create a version of this thing. But you know, that's, that's not really how God does things. When God wants to change the color of something, he doesn't just veneer it with a different kind of paint. 
That's our solution. That's our shortcut. What, you know what God does? Do you know how God produces color? By changing the essence of a thing. Do you know, let me, let me share something about, about color. Do you know that color does not exist in the room unless there's light? Do you know, do you know why? Because color does not belong to any material thing in the room. These things do not have color. None of these things in this room that appear to have color have color. They do not have color. What they do is they reflect back to us one part of the light spectrum. Did you, did you know that? So the, the constitution of this bottle, which we'll say for all intents and purposes, is reddish. Okay, hot pink, reddish. Uh, and just can stay with the primary colors. We say, oh, that's red. Actually, it isn't. It isn't red at all. It has no color. Light has color. And when light shines on that and it refracts back to us, it only refracts one tiny segment of the light spectrum, which happens to be red. That's why you see red. Not because that thing is red, but because it illuminates, highlights a part of the light spectrum. So when we want to change something's color, we will take paint and put paint on the outside of a different color. What God does is changes the essence of that thing. He changes the composition at a molecular level, and then it refracts back a different part of the light spectrum. That's how God brings change. We, well, God, I want to change my life. So we think change behavior. He says, change, he says I want to change your substance. You want to change the final stage of, of bringing something to life. I, I, don't, I don't work that way. My ways are higher than your ways. And what you, result, what you produce is a superficial effect at the end, but it's not really real. Oh, God, I, I'm going to change today. As of this moment, I will never smoke another cigarette because I hate tobacco and I do everything I can to make myself believe that I hate tobacco until I'm craving it. <sighs> What's the problem? Well, you're trying to hate it, but you really love it. The, the desire, the root desire, the, th the reason why we do things is we, because we have a desire for them. God's saying, listen, you can try and suppress all of the outcomes of your life or you can change the seeds. Well, how do I change the seed? Change what you love. I can't do that. Exactly. That's why we come to church. What, to listen to you? No. <laughs> Maybe. To draw nearer to him, to seek him, because he and only he can change our hearts. We, we need fundamental transformation. Well, I'm going to church in order to display how good I am. I'm trying to change my color. That doesn't do anything. You come into church to fulfill a moral obligation or religious sentimental uh, you know, criteria doesn't do anything. God says, I want to change your heart. So seek me while I can be found. Father. A little too much noise over there. There's something very profound going on here right now. Father, in Jesus' name, let there be no distractions of, in our hearts, no distractions right now. You know, the, when, when, you, uh, when you push down with your finger on a tomato seed to pick it up and it squirts out the side, that's how the issues of our heart are. The word's coming like a sword, but it needs to pierce that thing right through the center. But, uh, you know, that flesh of ours is trying to squirt out. I can feel the squirming right now. Father, because there's that part of you. Paul says there, there, there's something in me that's hostile to God. Oh, it's not in me? Well, if it was in Paul, it's in you. It's hostile to God. Well, let me give it a good coat of paint. Give it a coat of Christian paint. No, that thing's still hostile to God. You can put all kind of charismatic facades on it you want. Pride, self-elevation, ambition. 
all those things. You can, you can filter it into a system where all of a sudden it becomes a charismatic form of pride. It's still corruption. But because we're all about veneers, we're all about perceived harvests and not actual substance, we're good with that. But it's because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And he sees that there's a fundamental difference between acting a, a way you don't want to act, but only because you're being seen and living out of who you really are. Didn't somebody preach here recently? As a th man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Is that you? Yeah. You should say yes. Remember I said yeah. yes. <laughs> Amen. You did, right? It's almost like God knows what he's doing. We're about to step in to a massive kind of transformation. Think of all the things that are wrong with your wife, and if you don't know, ask your wife. It kind of rhymes. Think about the things that, all the things that are wrong with your life. If you don't know, ask your wife. Father, penetrate. Penetrate. So he says this. He says, listen, I'm going to send my word to do something in your heart. And my word is it's not, we always say, God, what do you want me to do? He's saying, no, it's not about doing, it's about being. And my word is coming not to tell you what to do, but to change who you are. What the word comes to do is to change who you are. When, you, when you're listening to the word of God, somebody was just telling me, uh, I know who it was, um, somebody, uh, Eve Bassett was just talking to me about a ministry in Rwanda, and this man that they walk with, he, he has all these children that he disciples, and most of them can't read or write, but he gets them to memorize verses of the Bible. And she's saying, and it's amazing, even though they, they largely don't understand what the word says, what it means, it's, and they can't read it, but they memorize these verses, and it's changing them from the inside out. Because the Bible, the word of God, is not a, an instruction booklet about how to behave. It carries a glory that changes the fundamental nature of your heart. It's meant to change your heart. But, you know, what we do is like, if you've done these things, feel guilty. Come to church and beat yourself for a little bit. Crea cre create as much resolve, you know, em embellish the, the, uh, the, the way you despise yourself enough that you'll be, you know, you'll be incentivized never to do it again. That's religion. God is saying that produces nothing except a self-hatred that lies to you because you really love the very thing that you are. You just hate the harvest, but you love the sin. Why do we sin? Because we love it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why you sin. See, these things are more complicated than we hoped. Because God understands that the reality that we're facing comes out of a process. He says, I don't want to just change the last stage of the process. I need to change the entire process. And the human mind doesn't understand the complexity of these processes. And so all through our lives, we see this. We see people who don't understand the complexity of things. But eventually, we start to discover that, hey, something isn't working. I was thinking about... Uh, ecosystems and how when you didn't understand ecosystems you didn't understand the relationship between one part of an ecosystem and another part so years ago they used to say you know some farmer on his land would say well you know i'm just going to pour radioactive material here in my land and i can do that because it's my land and i'm not doing it your land and of course they realized well actually that seeps into the the, the water system and then you, that pollutes my water and it goes over there and those minerals you know get I mean there's no there's interconnectivity on a scale that you can't you don't even realize so it's not enough to say well it's this is my thing I'll do what I want because this system is more complex than you know 
And that's what God is saying. He's saying, listen, you keep asking me, God, what should I do? And I'm saying to you, this, the results of what you do are part of a complex system that begins in the secret place you don't even know. You ask me to change this, but I'm saying, I can't change that. What I can do is send my word, and my word will change you. What I can promise you this is that I can give you my ways. I can bring you into a process that changes you. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. God. God does things to bring change. We just want him to make things different. Uh, we ask questions, why doesn't God just fix this? Well, if I were God, I wouldn't let this happen. Well, it's a good thing you're not God. And if you were God, you would understand that that doesn't really fix anything. <laughs> See, if you, and I heard this here recently. Somebody said, oh, I can't believe in a God who does that. Actually, God doesn't do that because if, if you want to keep him that from happening, then you actually have to abandon all of your autonomy. You have to give your, all your choices over because you made a choice here and you, you reinforce that choice right there. And you, you, uh, you, you know, when you plant a seed, you, you don't, you're not only planting a seed, you're pouring water on it. You're, you're putting manure around it. You're, you're keeping the weeds away. You're nurturing that thing all the way up to its fullness. And they say, no, God, don't give me the harvest of this. Well, if you don't want to have that harvest, I have to take your will away for the whole, the whole distance from beginning to end. Well, I can't, I'm not sure if I can believe in a God who, who lets this happen. Okay, what's the alternative? I, I can't believe in a God who allows sin to happen. I can't believe in a God who allows men to hurt their wives. So, okay. What's your solution? Well, let's get rid of men. I know. Let's call women men. They'll be nicer. I mean, these are the, these are the solutions that fallen minds come up with. Father, I pray, Lord, that something deep in our hearts would change. feel like there's this death going on. And I don't know if it's people online or if it's people in this room or if it's people in the future who are going to watch later, but it's like right now we are interceding for a kind of transformation that is beyond, beyond what we can do, beyond what's happening in the moment, beyond the people in this room. Father, I just pray right now, God, we, we lean into you. We lean into you. We lean into you. We lean into you. So many of the focuses of our mind, we're just saying, God, if you would just tell me what to do in this circumstance. And God is saying, stop asking me what to do. Stop asking me what to do. Stop asking me what you should do. I'm trying to change who you are. Father, Father in heaven. God in heaven. You know, I'm not even really sure where to go with this this morning because I feel like, like we should be going into a deep kind of intercession. I feel like there are people who are at this place in their lives and they're thinking, God, God, why is this happening to me? Why am I not getting this response? I, I have been faithful. I have done this. I have done that. I have done the right things. I've done what the church told me to do. I've done what my pastor told me to, me to do. I read the Bible, and now I'm getting all these outcomes that don't seem to, and it's, it's suddenly happening in my life, and I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with me. What am I doing wrong? And the Lord's saying, it's not about what you're doing wrong. It's about what I'm trying to change in your essence. I'm trying to change something deeper than the prescription for behavior that, we, that you've covered yourself in. Father, Father,
Just keep leaning in. I'm sure every marriage, every person who's married here has had this discussion with your spouse where they're annoyed by something you do, but you keep doing it. And they tell you, stop doing that. And they range in all kinds of levels. You know, the most annoying for me is, is why didn't you remember this? You mean, why didn't I bring something to my mind that I did not recall? Why did I not access something that I don't know where it is? Like, this is impossible. Well, you forgot the milk again. Yes, I can go out again or I can die right here. What's my penalty? <laughs> how can you fix that? What, what, you mean you didn't remember that? I mean, do you, do you know how impossible it is to remember something? It never entered into my mind. Well, you should have. Should have what? Entered it. You should have reminded yourself. Well, I tied a string around my finger, but I couldn't remember what that string was for. Like this is the silliness of this behavior modification world that we've made religion, Christianity. We say it's about just if you perform this way, we will all be happy. If you perform this way, God will be happy. If you perform this way, your neighbor will be happy. God is saying, my ways are higher than your ways. My ways are higher. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are higher. I have inducted you into a process, and you keep being frustrated by, by, because you keep getting the same harvest. I'm trying to interrupt your processes with another process, but you really don't want me to do that. So I'm waiting for a level of desperation to be crossed that you're ready to say whatever it takes. And not just because you heard a sermon that says surrender all. See? Oh, I, I'm going to say I surrender all. No, you're just saying that because that's the answer. That's the right answer. I don't want this harvest. But you do want the harvest. And the fact that you say I surrender all and think that that's covered it is the evidence you don't understand the process. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. God, change us. God, change us. See, I, I think we are coming into a level of glory that is going to be such transformation, but we're pulling on the wrong cords. We're pulling on God, what should I do? And he's saying, I want to change who you are. Pull on me, not my expectation of your behavior. Did you hear that? My glory will change you. But as long as you're looking for solutions to your life, you're not really looking for my glory. You're looking for a stopgap measure, a superficial behavior that is a response to a fundamental systemic problem. And I'm saying my glory will fill this place when you pull on my glory. When you become completely sure that another tweaking to the final stage of this prescription, if I just pray in tongues for 19 minutes instead of 18 minutes, then it's going to happen. Pray in tongues. But that extra minute is not really the issue. The issue is that you're still looking for prescriptions. You're still looking, what should I do? What should I do differently? Oh, I know. Last time God really touched me, I was wearing blue socks. Right? Can you see how all of this stuff falls into the same category as superstition? And God is saying, seek me. Desire me. Long for me. Long for me, my presence, who I am. I can change your heart. But this thing inside us that still has confidence that we can do it, always looking for some kind of fix that's superficial. Only when you've done it. And well, why does it take so long? Because it's only yet when you get to my age. Well, it's only when you get to around my age when you really get sick and tired of being the same person year after year after year. <laughs> they finally say, well, I've tried everything there is out there. God! 
change me. And you know what's the evidence? You know what the evidence is that you've actually gone to him for change? You change. <laughs> Whoever's born of God overcomes the world. And everything that fails was born of your effort. Born of your obligation. Born of your, your misguided sense that this is what God wants. He wants me to stand like this. Your behavioral modifications is no more than posturing. But your heart doesn't know that. See, when the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things, your heart tells you, well, if you just stand different, if you just wear blue socks, if you just pray in tongues one more minute, if you pray in tongues at all, if you just go to church one more time, if you don't go to church, if you stop tithing, if you tithe more, we think these, if I go like this, if I avoid black cats, if I walk on, same stuff. Just a Christian form of superstition. God is saying, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Father, the exciting thing is this. I believe as a generation, I believe we're about to step into a place where our hearts are so fixated on him. We're going to pull on a realm of glory that's going to come down on our meetings. And people are going to be transformed at a pace that will make your head spin. And those long hated systemic problems that our wives and our husbands and our kids have talked about and pointed at will suddenly just lose their power and shift in our life in a moment. Father. So let me finish by saying this there's no quick fix. There's no, well, if I cross my T this way, if I dot my I that way, there's none of those things. God is saying, listen, I want you to get so desperate for me. This is why he starts out this whole section. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Ask God right now, Lord, uncover all my motivations. What's the real reason I go to church? What's the real reason I don't go to church? What's the reason I read the word? What's the reason I don't read the word? Like, what are those underlying things? They determine who you are. And God is saying, I can change them all.